Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's review the concept of the electric field. And in order to get a better picture of what that means, what is an electric field, let's talk about something we're a little bit more familiar with, the gravitational field. So let's say we have the Earth right here. These lines here then represents, represent the gravitational field around the Earth. And how do we know that it's there? Well, we can test it by placing a small mass in space close to the Earth and then measuring the force on that mass. And of course, we know that we place an object out in space close to the Earth, that that object will feel a force of attraction due to the gravitational force towards the Earth. And so we can measure that. So we take a test mass with mass m, and we measure the force on that. And then we can say that the force between the two is equal to g m m over r squared. And of course, that is the Newton's law of gravity. Most of us are familiar with that. And then if we divide both sides by the mass of the test mass, so that the ratio of the force experienced by the test mass divided by the size of the test mass must equal to g, the gravitational constant, times the mass that causes the gravitational field, the Earth, divided by the distance between the test mass and the Earth squared. This expression is the gravitational field, although we don't use that very much in physics, it still represents the gravitational field. What is important to know that the ratio here will always be the same number, because what if we make the test mass twice as big, 2m? Well, that means that the force experience would be twice as much 2f, and then 2f divided by 2m would still be the same ratio. It has no impact on the gravitational field and on the force experienced there. If that ratio will always be the same for any size test mass. So now let's come over here. What we have here, instead of having an object with mass, we have an object with charge, positive charge. And so there exists a field around that emanating outward. How do we know that? Well, we can take a test charge, a small q, and place it inside the field, and it will experience a force away from this charge right here. So we can then say, using Coulomb's law, that the force experience is K times the charge causing the field times the test charge divided by the distance between them squared. And then if we divide both sides by the small test charge, F divided by Q, that ratio now represents the electric field. K, Q, that causes the field divided by the distance squared to the point where we want to know the electric field. And so we use the letter E for the electric field. Now notice that E is essentially a vector, but right now we just want to talk about the magnitude. How strong is the field at that point? Well, all we have to do is put a test charge there, measure the force experienced by the test charge. That ratio will be the strength of the field. Now, if we make the test charge twice as big, it will feel a force twice as big. And again, the ratio is exactly the same. It will not make a difference, just like it is over here. So what we can then say is that the electric field is therefore equal to the ratio of the force experienced by a test charge divided by the size of the test charge. And notice now I've pushed it into a vector format because the direction of the field is equal to the direction of the force experienced by a positive test charge. So by definition, the test charge must be positive. But we could also have an object like that with negative charge around it. It's still Q but negative charge in this case. So now we have an electric field that points towards the negative charge. How do I know that? Is because when I put a small test charge there, and by definition that test charge must be positive, it will experience a force towards this charge, because obviously opposite charges attract one another. The magnitude of that force is still k q times q over r squared, r being the distance between the two. And so using Coulomb's law, we get the exact same result. Magnitude-wise, the direction will be different, but then you can see that if we divide both sides by the test charge, Q, we end up with the very same ratio, so that the magnitude of the electric field, provided that the amount of negative charge there is equal to the amount of positive charge there, and that the test charge there is the same size as the test charge there, put at the same distance away, it will experience an electric field of the exact same magnitude, but now opposite in direction, because using this equation, knows that the force will now be in the opposite direction, and therefore the direction of the electric field will be in the opposite direction. So what we can do, for example, if we have positive charge causing the electric field, that electric field is therefore equal to K times Q, 
Q would be the charge on that object divided by the distance squared to wherever we want to know wherever we are, the distance away from that charge causing the field squared in a direction away, radially away from the charge and if that was a negative charge we would have a negative sign in front of it. Of course remember that K, that constant K is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared which is part of the constant that we see in Coulomb's law. So just like we have the gravitational constant with gravity and the Earth, we have K, the constant used in Coulomb's law to express the force caused by two charges being close to one another. So that hopefully gives us a good insight into what an electric field is, how it's defined, how we know what the magnitude of the field is at any point away from a charge causing a field and what the direction of the field is caused by either positive charges or negative charges. And that is the electric field.